So now let's look at personal data production bill. So this is going to be slightly longer, um, slightly detailed also. Uh, so let's go slowly on this uh, because this is a, this is under discussion right now, and uh, it's yet to become a yet to become an act. So the way it is a draft is produced, draft becomes a bill, and then revisions goes in the bill, and then the bill gets converted into an act. That's when it can be implemented. When it is a draft or a bill, it's not. It does not really have any powers uh, for it to be used. There is no mandatory requirement if it is not an act. Okay. So what we are going to look at is the PDP bill, so to say. 2019 is what it was presented. First, let's look at what are the aspects of it. We look again. Please remember, it's a 57-page document, very, very legalish. I think it'll be extremely hard for us to go through all of this uh, as part of this class. It'll probably take multiple weeks of content uh, for it. But my interest is to show you that these things exist and how these things have been implemented, which you can actually use it uh, in in your own uh, context. Obligations for data fiduciary. Uh, again, we'll look at the definition of fiduciary. It's data processor, right? So who has access to the information? Um, prohibition of uh, processing of personal data. Limitation of purpose. Limitation on collection. Requirement for notice. Uh, quality of personal data. Restriction on retention of personal data. Accountability and concern. So if you look at it, some of these words we have already seen in different, different contexts for the class. It is written as part of this bill itself. Um, then grounds for processing of personal data without concern. In what context can people actually process the data, collect the data and process the data without having concern uh, for the data? Right to be forgotten. I think these things of uh, right to be forgotten, it's all very, very advanced in, in Europe uh, right now. Uh, but in India, we're just catching up on these topics. Privacy by design, transparency, security safeguards, reporting of personal breach, classification of data fiduciary, data protection impact assessment, maintenance of records, audit of policies, data protection officer, uh, processing by entities other than fiduciaries, grievance, redressal by data fiduciary. Again, some of these things you'll remember we have covered in, in some aspects earlier in the Fair Information Practices uh, week. So one of the critical things that this uh, um, bill is actually proposing is to set up a Data Protection Authority of India. So Data Protection Authority of India, the role, what, what it should do, what is, the, what is the mandate for it, who will be the uh, uh, body which is part of this uh, authority, uh, what all can they do or what all they cannot do. All of that is listed in some versions here, so which is establishments of the authority, composition and qualifications, terms and conditions of appointment, removal of church persons, power of church persons, meetings of authority, uh, vacancies, officers, code of practices, all that. So they, they went in slightly detail of how to set up the authority uh, itself, which is discussed here. So now uh, let's look at in detail some aspects of uh, this uh, bill. Again, I will highly, highly recommend you to read it yourself uh, fully. And if there's any discussion that you want to have it with me, I'll be happy to speak with you. And not just with you, for the entire class also. So let's read what is this act or bill, uh, what is this bill all about, right? The Personal Data Protection Bill is to provide for protection of privacy of individuals relating to their personal data, specify the flow and usage of personal data, create a relationship of trust between persons and entities processing the personal data, protect the rights of individuals whose personal data are processed, to create a framework for organizational and technical measures in processing of data, laying down norms for social media intermediary, cross-border transformer, uh, cross-border transfer, uh, accountability of entities, processing personal data, remedies for unauthorized and harmful processing, and to establish Data Protection Authority of India 
for the purpose, uh, for the said purpose and for matters connected here with or incidental there at all. All right. Um, so that's what the bill is all about, explaining details about what information could be collected, who can have access to it, what situation the information could be collected about the authority itself. Whereas the right of privacy is a fundamental right and it's necessary to protect personal data as an ins essential facet of informational privacy. And whereas the growth of a digital economy has expanded the use of data as a critical means of communication between persons. So we'll actually come back to this, uh, uh, how data is becoming a more and more important thing even from the um, uh, non-personal data production uh, framework that we'll discuss also. Where data is basically the way that companies and organizations are talking about right now. Uh, so that is what the PDP bill is. So that gives you a sense of what the bill is all about, right? So let's go over the bill section by section and see what all components the bill has, what are the protection that it gives, what features does it have, all that in detail. I've highlighted the parts that we will actually look into detail. Uh, I'll also share this annotated document as in the slides before, so you will get access to what all annotations that I've done also. So who is a data fiduciary? The word data fiduciary comes up so many times in this uh, PDP bill. Uh, so we need to know what the definition of the data fiduciary is, right? Data fiduciary means any person, including the state, a company, a juristic entity, or any individual who alone or in conjunction with others determines the purpose and the means of processing of the personal data. Right. So who is deciding on what the data should be processed for? That's data fiduciary. Right. So I'm, I'm going slowly so you'll get a sense. These document links are also uh, on the slides, so you should be able to get to that. You can, you can go through the document yourself, but some parts I'll actually enable uh, a discussion around it. So this one is the fundamental thing that we've seen, right? Notice. So every data fiduciary shall give to the data principal a notice. Data principal is the owner of the data. Principal a notice at the time of the collection of the personal data, or if the data is not collected for the personal uh, for the uh, from the data principal, as soon as reasonably practicable, containing the following information, namely. So it could be the case that Amazon is collecting data from me, right? I know that Amazon is collecting this data. It could be the case that I don't even know Amazon is going to get access to this data, right? So that's what they're they're saying. And if the, if the data is not collected from the data principal, right? If it's not directly collected from me, as soon as I get I have I get in touch with the data data being collected, I should be notified that. The purpose for which the data, personal data is being processed, the nature and categories of personal data being collected. So I think some of this is repeating. I, I am, I uh, consciously have left it the way uh, it is, it is repeating, uh, because I think you will get to know the importance of some of these uh, topics as you see it in multiple places, fair information practices we saw, privacy policies we saw, and now we are seeing in GDPR or PDP bill, uh, and then you will see it in GDPR. The nature and categories of personal uh, data being collected, uh, the identity uh, and, and contact details of the data fiduciary and contact details of the data protection officer if applicable, the right of the data principal to withdraw his consent and procedure for such withdrawal if the personal data is in, intended to be processed on the basis of the consent, right? So the, the, I mean, I should have the right to say that, look, you can't collect my data. I should have the right to be forgotten, erased, all that will come later. But that's the theme here, and the, the end user, the customer, should have the right. 
the basis for such pre-process such processing uh, and the consequences of failure to provide such personal data if processing of the personal data is based on the grounds specified in section 12 to 14 the source of such collection of the personal data is not collected from that data principle. I mean, if, if they are collecting some information about me from a different source, that source also should be notified for me. Individual entities, including other data fiduciaries or data processors, with whom such personal data may be shared if applicable. Amazon is collecting data from us for delivering a book, but Amazon is also sharing that detail to a a uh, courier company or a delivery company who knows the data, who has my cell number to come and deliver the book. That's what the third party could be here. Information regarding any cross-border transfer of personal data that the data fiduciary intends to carry out, which is data from India being collected, uh, is going for an Indian citizen is collected and it's being moved to the US. Uh, stored there or a data being collected in India for a Europe uh, company, Europeans data is being collected in Europe and then it's transferred in the US. All of this is cross-border policies, right? So that has to be explicitly stated. The period for which the personal data shall be retained in, in terms of Section 9 or where such period is not known, the criteria for determining such period, right? So. So this period generally is mentioned as oh, how long the data will be kept. The existence of and procedure for exercise of rights mentioned in Chapter 5, the procedure for grievance. So all of this is slightly more in detail. But for us, the important things were the first few, uh, which is data being collected, cross-border, uh, who has access to uh, the data, uh, what all information should be provided to the user before the data is being collected, all that. Right. Hope that gives you a sense. Again, this is the PDP bill, so which is under which is under review. So once this comes through, hopefully it'll be a, it'll be an act, and you all can actually benefit from the advantages that the PDP bill is providing us, which is more and more uh, privacy-aware policies being created for the data that's collected in India, especially about the Indian citizens also. The data fiduciary shall take necessary steps to ensure uh, necessary steps to ensure that the personal data processed is complete, accurate, not misleading, and updated having regard to the purpose for which it is processed. Right. My information should be collected and it should be accurate. They can't take the, my information as male and change it as female. Profile picture or, or a passport uh, graph photograph uh, that is taken from me and then instead of me, there's somebody else in my uh, government records. I think these cannot happen, right? The data fiduciary shall not retain any personal data beyond the period necessary to satisfy the purpose for which it is processed and shall delete the personal data at the end of the processing. Right? The data Amazon takes the data for uh, submission uh, of, of delivery of the goods and they have let's take a 30 day or a 10 day uh, return policy. The return policy time is also done. Now why does Amazon need to store my details? right? So that's the kind of point here that the fiduciary should be, fiduciary should delete the details after the transactions is done and the due diligence for, and the, and the due time is given for anything around the uh, transaction. The data fiduciary shall be responsible for complying with the provisions of this act in respect of any processing undertaken by it or on its behalf. On its behalf is also important, right? If Amazon is uh, letting a third party to do the transactions, that third party also should be protected, should, should give us protection for the data that's being collected from us. The personal data shall not be processed except on the consent given by the data principle at the commencement of its processing. Right. 
only for the data that I've given concern, the processing should be done, right? They can't just collect all data and then uh, and then process all of them. So there is there is also this provision of um, um, central government organizations have a different way of looking at this data provisions being given for them. The central government shall, in consultation with authority and the sectoral regulator concerned, notify such categories of personal data, sensitive personal data, having regard to the risk of significant harm, the expectations of confidentiality attached, whether significantly discernible class of data principles may suffer the adequacy of protection afforded by ordinary provisions applicable to personal data. So essentially what this is, this is saying that the central government or the government will have uh, a way by which it will classify uh, the personal data and give a, give a list of uh, what is personally identifiable, what is sensitive, what is super sensitive, all that. I think this list is an important list important list to have and every country has been producing such kind of a list which uh, which keeps modif uh, which keeps changing over a period of time also uh, so having such a list is very important the data principle shall uh, shall where necessary having regard to the purposes for which the personal data is being processed subject to such conditions and in such manner as may be specified by regulations have the right to correction of inaccurate information, completion of incomplete, updation of personal data that is out of date, and erasure of personal data which is no longer necessary for the purpose of which it was processed. As user, you should have access to changing the data, uh, asking the company to delete, all that. Where the processing has been carried out through automated means, the data principal shall have the right to receive the following personal data in a structured, commonly used, and a machine-readable format. So in these days, probably this is going to be in JSON. Right. So what this is, this, this provision is for you to go ask Facebook, saying, please give me all the data that you have about me. And this is uh, these uh, these features are already there because I think in the U.S. Uh, and in Europe these have become very required. GDPR also makes it mandatory, so therefore there is a provision of you asking for information, uh, what uh, what the companies have about you, and clicking a few buttons and getting that as a JSON object. But we'll also have to keep in mind uh, what they are sharing and what they are not sharing in the in the file that they're giving you. Are they sharing everything that they know? I think some some uh, evaluations have to be done there. The personal data provided to the data fiduciary, <clears throat> at least here they're saying that what is that they have? Personal data provided to the data fiduciary, the data which has been generated in the course of provisions of services, use of data, uh, use of goods by the data fiduciary or the data which forms part of the, any profile of a data principle. Because I think the companies, when they collect data, the data itself is important, of course, but the inferences that they make out of the data is much more important for them, right? Their, their, their choices that they're going to make is going to be dependent on the data that uh, they have, right? And the inferences that they're drawing on it. Keeping that in mind, I think uh, if, um, uh, if if uh, uh, we get access to, if, if the companies uh, have access to the inferences and we are able to know from where the companies made their inferences uh, through this uh, a way by which we can ask data what they have, I think it will be super nice. So every data fiduciary shall prepare a privacy by design policy containing the managerial organizational business practices and technical systems, obligations of data fiduciary, the technology used in the processing, the legitimate interest of business including any innovation is achieved, the protection of privacy, the processing of personal data, 
the interest of data principle is accounted for every stage, for at every stage of processing of personal data. So this, these, these things are these things are details, but I think these are very very relevant uh, for for having the protection uh, of the personal data that is collected from the principal. And this privacy by design, privacy uh, um, policies are are one way by which companies can actually express what they're doing, which we have seen in detail earlier. Uh, part of this uh, course. Every data fiduciary shall take necessary steps to maintain transparency in processing personal data and shall make the following information available in such form and manner as may be specified by regulations. The categories of personal data are generally collected in the manner of such collection the purpose for which the personal data is being generally processed. So this, this word transparency also is becoming more and more important, right? Fairness, accountability, and transparency, these are called fact. Fairness, accountability, and transparency. Many Amazon <clears throat> are making some choices with the data and inferences from the data that they collected from us. Can they let Everybody know how they're making the choices, how they're making the recommendations. Being transparent um, makes uh, makes it very um, um, equitable for everybody. But again, uh, a company's advantage, business advantage, also may be uh, maybe the reason why the transparency is much harder for the companies. Every data fiduciary and data processor shall, having regard to the nature, scope, and purpose of processing personal data, the risks associated with such processing, and the likelihood and severity of the harm that may result from such processing, implement necessary security guards, including. So this is more of the security safeguards. Right, so it says de-identification, encryption, integrity of the personal data. So all of this we have seen in the past. Every data fiduciary shall by notice. So and and the other thing that I I'm I'm kind of hoping that you will you will connect the dots is that we have seen many concepts in the clause and it's all coming together in this in this uh, PDP bill. You will see that it's connected in GDPR also, uh, and and and. And so all of these all of these concepts are coming together, which also makes it more interesting that you are aware. If you read these policies, if you read these acts and bills yourself, you should be able to connect almost everything that is discussed in this uh, document. Every data fiduciary shall by notice inform authority about the breach of any personal data processed by the data fiduciary where such breach is likely to cause harm to any data principal. So this is also an important one, which is the um, if if my data is breached, if you're running a company and if you have my data and the data got breached, the server got hacked, or you stole, you you uh, misplaced the data and this data was lost, in all of these scenarios, I should be notified that such a breach has happened. And in the past, I I have been my my data has been part of some of these breaches, and I've got physical letters. Uh, email saying that uh, your your um, that is a possibility that your data is in is part of this uh, data leak. So please go ahead and change the password. Please come to come to our bank and change the physical card. All that. That's what is mentioned here, which is it is necessary for the companies to actually make this. Uh, accountable, make the company accountable by saying that you should do this. The significant data fiduciary shall maintain accurate and up-to-date records of the following in such form and manner as may be specified by regulations, namely important operations in the data life cycle, a periodic review of the security safeguards, data production impact assessment, and any other aspect of processing as may be specified by the regulations. So the company also should have a track of 
uh, all the all the measurements that the company has taken, uh, data fiduciary has taken to protect the data. So continuing in the looking at the different parts of uh, PDP bill, here is the next one: data protection officer. Every significant data fiduciary shall appoint data protection officer possessing such qualification and experience as may be specified by regulations for carrying out the following functions. So I think this chief privacy officer, chief data protection officer, all of these are roles that have been generated, created because of these kind of regulations now. I don't think so 15 years before or 20 years before there was anything called as chief privacy officer. Today, if you see chief privacy officer has become very common uh, in companies. Uh, so therefore, the proposal here is to have data protection officer, which may be slightly different from the privacy officer. Um, so this is the exem exemptions for um, uh, central government, where the central government is satisfied that it is necessary or expedient <clears throat> in the interest of sovereignty um, and integrity, sovereignty and integrity of India, the security of the state, friendly relations with foreign states, public order, or for preventing in, in, incitement to the commission of any cognizable offense relating to sovereignty and uh, integrity of India. So essentially what this means is that central government has access to uh, can <clears throat> be exempted from uh, collecting uh, information, exempted from providing protection to the data for test national uh, level problems. That's what this 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 part is trying to say. It's giving the giving the government a way by which they don't have to, for example, a case is getting investigated, they don't have to actually. Uh, get worried about or protection concerned all of this that's the uh, protection that but it's an exemption but this exception comes from with with lot of processes that has to be taken care of so next one is a very computer sciencey thing which is the authority shall for purposes of encouraging innovation and artificial intelligence machine learning or any other emerging technology in public interest create a sandbox so the sandbox is uh, many. I think many many um, um, implementation these days have sandboxes. It's, the idea is that they create a um, sandbox where you can actually go apply your algorithms to check. Let's take if they have data, you can you can put in your algorithm to check where what the results for the data are. Uh, some of the sandboxes that we have done is um, uh, in the healthcare sector where they have created a sandbox. They have created a um, place where we can actually set up our um, code and interact with the data that they have kept through APIs to see how uh, decisions could be made, how our implementation can be improved and all that. Right? Sand pit, right, where the kids play. That's the analogy here. Uh, that's I mean in, in in any place you can you can put a small uh, space for a sand pit where kids can play they won't get hurt and everything that's the idea for a sandbox here and you will not have access to uh, the entire data that uh, entire data entire infrastructure the company or the organization has also restricted view of what the company does is the sandbox. Central government shall, by notification, establish for the purposes of this act an authority to be called as Data Protection Authority of India. Right. So if this bill gets uh, passed, there will be an organization called Data Protection Authority of India, and then the rest of this um, uh, PD people goes into details of what this authority should be, who should be recruited, who should be on the board, uh, what all powers do they have all that I don't think so that is that much required for the for this class so I'm going to skip all of that but the rest of the document is only about uh, authority of India so I don't think so I, there's anything highlighted after this let me make sure that I'm not missing anything 
Yeah, after this, the the end of the document just just summarizes all the clauses that are mentioned in the document. Right. So that's the PD people. Now let's look at GDPR. So what all we have done? We have already done uh, looking at. Uh, uh, looking at the IT Act 2000, the amendments, and the PD people. Now let's go outside India to look at what GDPR is, and then we'll come back and look at uh, the uh, NPD, uh, non-personal data framework. This GDPR document will look very similar to the PD people. Probably PDP got inspired by uh, the committee that wrote the PDP uh, bill got very much inspired by GDPR and therefore they kind of took a lot of inspiration from here. Um, so I'm going to highlight some of it and for for redundancy purposes also I've kept uh, some parts to be repeating from what we have already seen to make sure that you understand the importance that it is covered in GDPR and PD people also. Initially there's a lot of uh, um, introduction for the problem, context, scenario setting, all that is, happen is happening in the document. And then they talk about articles. So we'll jump directly to the different articles that are there in the document. Right. So from here is what the uh, articles of the GDPR comes. So we'll go through uh, some, again, important uh, ones. The rest I will leave it for you to digest it yourself. So the definitions. Again, the you should look at the these these kind of documents to give some clarity on the definitions that we have seen in the class until now. Also, so this says personal data means any information relating to an identified or identifiable natural person. That's data subject. An identifiable natural person is one who can be identified directly or indirectly, in particular by reference to an identifier such as a name, an identification number, location, an online identifier, or to one or more factors specific to the physical, psych physiological, genetic, mental, economic, cultural, or social identity of the natural person. What an interesting way of defining about a person, right? details that they have provided. Any information about you and me will fall there personal data. That can be identified. Processing means any operation or set of operations which is performed on personal data, on sets of personal data, whether or not by automated means such as collecting, collection, recording, organization, structuring, uh, storage, adaptation, or alteration, retrieval, consultation, use, disclosure, by transmission, dissemination, or otherwise making available alignment or combination, restrictions, erasure, or destruction. Right? Any of this, if you do with the data, that's called processing. Very detailed, right? Very, very intense in that sense also. Uh, let's jump to controller. Again, there are many other definitions. I'm, I'm connecting to only some things that we have seen in the class. Controller means the natural or the legal person, public authority, agency, or other body, which alone or jointly with others, determines the purposes and means of the processing of personal data, where the purposes and the means of such processing are determined by union or member state law. The controller or the specific criteria for its nomination may be provided by the union or the member state law. Right? So this is basically person who has control over the data. It can be it can be the uh, state. It can be state representatives. It can be an organization. Processor means a natural or a legal person, public authority, or an agency or other body which processes personal data on behalf of the controller. It could be this this processor could be uh, Amazon for that matter. Right. Recipient means a natural or a legal person, public authority, or agency, or another body to which the personal data are disclosed. 
whether a third party or not. However, public authorities which may receive personal data in the framework of a particular inquiry in accordance with union or member state law shall not be regarded as recipients. Recipients is a, a body which personal data are disclosed, meaning who is getting the data, right? Third party means a natural or a legal person, public authority, agency, or a body other than the data subject, controller, processor, and persons who under third party could be the delivery uh, person that I mentioned earlier about Amazon. Consent of the body uh, of the data subject means any freely given, specific, informed, and ambiguous indication of the data subject's wishes by which he or she, by a statement or by a clear affirmative action, signifies agreement to the processing of personal data relating to him or her. I bought a book on Amazon. I'm giving the concern for Amazon to use the data to, pro to personalize uh, my search results in future. Personal data breach, which means breach of security leading to the accidental or unlawful destruction, loss, alteration, unauthorized disclosure of or access to personal data transmitted, stored or otherwise processed. Somebody hacking into LinkedIn data server. That's the personal data breach. Right. So please feel free to take a look at this document again, whichever parts you are interested in. There's a lot of interesting um, interesting ramifications of this GDPR and PDP bull that people are, uh, people are thinking about, worried about sometimes. Because I think it's, it's very hard uh, to, uh, I think it's very hard to uh, implement all of this very well and do well in business also. Right. And another way of saying is that companies are going to have a lot more work in terms of giving all these protection, giving all these uh, disclosures and making sure that all the policies are maintained and still do their business well. Um, article, processing of personal data relating to criminal convictions and offenses. Uh, processing of personal data relating to criminal convictions and offenses or related security measures based on Article 6.1 shall be carried out only under the control of the official authority or when the processing is authorized by the union or state member state law providing for appropriate safeguards for the rights and freedoms of data subjects. Right. So this is basically if, if, uh, if anybody is getting access to criminals uh, data, uh, it, is, it can be given only under um, certain level of protection and only uh, authority level X and above will get access to that data. The right of access by data subject, the right the data subject shall have the right to obtain from the controller confirmation as to whether or not personal data concerning him or her are being processed and where that is the case. Access to the personal data and following information, the purpose of the processing, right? So the same list, the purpose of the processing, categories of personal data concerned, all of that should be available for the for the subject to know that the company is doing uh, with my data. Right to rectification, the data subjects shall have the right to obtain from the controller without undue delay, important thing, without undue delay, the rectification of inaccurate personal data concerning him or her. Taking into account the purpose of the processing, the data subject shall have the right to have incomplete personal data completed, including by means of providing supplementary statement. So, so this unduly um, undue delay I mentioned because you can ask for ask the company for the data, and the company can take like as long as they want to give you the data. It's not possible. It has to be given in certain uh, time frame. Right to erasure. The data subject shall have the right to obtain from the controller the erasure of personal uh, data concerning him or her without undue delay, and the controller shall have the obligation to erase personal data without undue delay where one of the following grounds applies. My information, I should have the right to erase. A right to data portability, 
the data subject shall have the right to receive the personal data concerning him or her which he or she has provided to a controller in a structured commonly used and machine readable format so this is again portability that we saw in pdp bill also where i can i can go to amazon and say please give all the data that you have about me particularly they should give it in a machine readable format which i mentioned earlier could be json the data subject shall have the right not to be subject to a decision based solely on automated processing including profiling which produces legal uh, effects concerning him or her or similarly significantly affects him or her so so this is shall have the right not to be subject to decision based so so um, amazon should not be just making decisions uh, only by automated methods on the things that they are doing with my data it more more details about uh, uh the gdpr notification of a personal data breach to the supervisory authority in the case of so look, take it take a look at the time and everything details that they provided here in the case of personal data breach which we also saw in pd people the controller shall without undue delay and where feasible not later than 75 72 hours uh, after having become aware of it notify the personal breach to the supervisory authority competent in accordance with the article 55 unless the personal data breach is unlikely to result in a risk to the rights and freedoms of the natural persons where the notification to the supervisor authority is not made within 72 hours it shall be accompanied by reasons for the delay so i think gdpr is going little uh one step ahead not just saying that oh it should be noticed notified it should be notified within 72 hours is the argument that uh, the gdpr is making and if it is not made within 72 hours explanation has to be given right so again pressed a lot of details about uh, what all could be done what all cannot be done authority um all that details is there in the rest of the rest of the gdpr document i'll let you again it's an 88 page document i will let you to go through it yourself uh if 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 it's of interest to you right so that gives us a sense of what's going on in the world right? these are these are the important ones right gdpr is a prominent one uh pd people in india is a extremely important one where the world is looking at when we'll have some kind of a conclusion uh and acceptance of the bill that's being uh, presented now let's look at the uh, npd i think my goal for having the npd part uh is is uh, from from the point of view of comparing it with the personal data because there's not a lot of details that i want to go through in the npd uh, as part of this class so we we looked at personal data right personal data is is your cell number my cell number all that non personal data also can be actually used very well for uh, um making making decisions very much useful in uh, uh improving the society uh, all that can happen with the non personal data also what's a non personal data right non personal data you could think of it as um uh if i mean i'm taking a uber from triple it hyderabad to airport uh pk taking the uber and i'm i'm on the cab going from here to um uh, airport could be probably personal data but if you just think about it if if uber could be asked a question that look give us the number of people who are on the road from triple it hyderabad to airport that number that aggregate information may not be personal right does not have to be just only that level it could be oh, give us the age bracket between 20 to 40 or 40 to 80 or something like that right so if 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 such kind of details which is non if you remember we also talked about it in anonymization techniques so if if uh, uber was to give uh, saying here is a user 1 age group x to y 
is on route to airport. User 2, Z to A, Z to G, H group, and is on the route to airport at, at a point of B. Th this level of information can be extremely useful for many things. For example, you could think of using this information for uh, designing the um, signal, uh, traffic signal system based on the number of cars that could be around that location. Right? Uber data can be extrapolated and used to make this choice. There are many such information, right? Meteorological uh, information, climatic uh, details about, about a location uh, can be used for social good if it was being used and, and if it was being corroborated with the other information that is available, which could be personal information. So that's the idea. Non-personal data is a, is a set of data that is available not identifiable to individuals, but still being very useful for making decisions. How can you now, how can you now do business? How can you now make, empower organizations, empower citizens with this non-personal data? So something uh, socially good can be done and uh, some things, uh, world can be a little bit a better place to live. That's the goal here. Right. Again, I'll let you to uh, go through this. I, I mean, at least I was I was very happy to be part of this uh, uh, committee to uh, do the deliberations and everything. So again, I let you let you go through it. But but the uh, earlier earlier in this week, I said right there is this whole thing of data with which. Amazing things could be done. Non-personal data is one piece. We don't generally talk about it. We have always spoken about uh, personal data only. Yeah, please go through this document. I my 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 intent here was to compare it with uh, uh, personal uh, data and um, to to highlight the point that the non-personal data also should be protected in one sense and should be available for uh, making business values. So that's what we have. So we saw IT Act 2000, then we saw IT Act 2008 amendment, then we saw GDPR, PDP bill, and then the NPD report. Thanks again for listening to the class for week 11. Um, um, hopefully, hopefully again, this privacy loss gave you a different perspective of privacy uh, uh, as a topic and you're able to make some connections to other topics that you've already seen. Uh, good luck. See you soon.